In this four part video series, I'm going on an epic road trip across the southwest of England. I'll be showing you all the best locations across Cornwall, Devon, Somerset and Dorset and giving you some practical tips along the way. Geography teaches what dream is. So if you love road trips, stunning natural scenery and maybe even some local delicacies. That pasty is as big as my head. And this is the video for you. Honestly, I can't tell you how genuinely happy I am to be here right now. Hello by the way, if you're new here my name's Robbie Romes, I make no fuss travel guides and tip videos here on YouTube. So if you're one of the 94% of people that watch my videos but don't subscribe, please quickly do me a massive favour and hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Now it's time to grab your popcorn, get a notepad and a pen and enjoy. This is Road Trip Southwest. I literally cannot believe what's just happened. Come on! Coming up in episode 4, the grand finale of the series, I tackle the world famous Jurassic Coast moving from Devon into Dorset. I, I can't possibly describe just how unreal this place looks. I then become absolutely gobsmacked at some of Dorset's natural wonders. This place has to be up there with the top two, three places that I've been on this trip. Unbelievable. So today we're continuing on to the English Riviera. We're going to stop at Torquay. Uh, I know there's plenty of places around there. You've got bricks and paint and Dawlish, so on and so forth. We're not going to stop at all of them. Torquay's certainly the first place we're going to stop today. Torquay is a much-loved seaside resort town, famous for its sandy beaches, palm trees and marina. I would recommend one of the many boat trips on offer, or perhaps visit the nearby Kent's Cavern, or the very popular Babacan Model Village. We stayed for breakfast, had a walk around the marina, before making our way to our next destination, which was Dawlish Warren Beach. Dawlish Warren is yet another popular traditional seaside escape, certainly more popular with families thanks to the funfair rides, fast food and arcades that are on offer. The sandy beach is backed with distinctive sand dunes and an internationally recognised nature reserve. So here we've got Dawlish Warren Beach, uh, over the estuary that way you've got Exmouth and then that is pretty much where the Jurassic Coast starts in East Devon and then it follows its way around all the way to Dorset. So we're going to be exploring that probably starting later today, definitely tomorrow. Just wanted to point out a bit of geography. So I've come to the city of Exeter and the square around the cathedral and like a couple of streets back, there's a really good vibe here. I went and bought a burrito from one of the uh, many food places that are in and around the cathedral. I've just come and sat on the grass and uh, ate it. Quite a pleasant experience to be honest, although the burrito made an absolute mess. So if you're interested in visiting the cathedral, make sure you check the opening times before you come. Um, I'm here on a Sunday and it closes at three. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to go in anyway. I've visited quite a few cathedrals and uh, religious places like that on this trip. And the bowels of the cathedral are just sounding behind uh, as I'm leaving the city. So there's certainly still a lot to come in this video and some of the places on the Jurassic Coast just look absolutely incredible. I've never visited much down there. Uh, I've always wanted to and like from a photography point of view it's like a bit of a dream to get down there, sad as that sounds. So yeah, next couple of days are going to be pretty good. It's going to be a nice way to end the trip. I'm stood overlooking the beach here at the historic fishing village of Beer which is really on the southeast edge of Devon and uh, a real picturesque place, a place that I've been wanting to visit. I've seen photos of it online. So the, the cove here is just cut out of these, uh, I don't know if they're limestone cliffs, but obviously we're now on the Jurassic Coast. It's a nice peaceful contrast from the hustle and bustle where I just was up in Exeter. And if you're wondering, are there any pubs in beer? There certainly is. I've seen three or four down in this lower part of the village. So you can come to beer and drink a beer. That's definitely on the cards. Thank you. 
So just a couple of miles from where I was in Beer, uh, over the cliffs over there actually. And right now I'm on Seaton Beach, which is this long sweeping pebble beach that seems to go quite a while to be honest. And whilst I know it's a Sunday and it's like getting on for 6 p.m. It's really peaceful here. I can imagine on a nice warm summer's day this place could be really busy. Um, but right now it's peaceful. And you can even hear yourself think, which is a dangerous place to be when you've been on a road trip for however many days in a row. And we've officially crossed into Dorset now. And uh, I've just pitched up for the night actually. I'm staying on a place called Penn Farm Campsite, uh, just over the border. We're not too far from Lyme Regis, that's probably going to be our first starting place tomorrow as we explore more of this beautiful Dorset countryside. As we head to the conclusion of this, quite frankly, magical southwest road trip, it's the only way I can describe it. Um, yeah, and there's more still to come. Buzzing. Good morning, so I'm up ready to explore the Jurassic Coast today. Really looking forward to that. We're heading now down to Lyme Regis, which is four miles from here. And what I'm interested in is visiting the Fossil Beach, uh, taking a little look around there, and then we're gonna do a uh, hop, jump and a skip across the south coast in Dorset here, visiting some real famous places that you might know from TV. Our first stop was the Fossil Beach at Lyme Regis, a place to hunt for ammonite fossils dating back almost 200 million years. This would make a great stop for kids or anyone that's curious, just like me. Be sure to park at the Monmouth Beach car park, and whatever you do, don't follow the Google Maps location for the fossil beach in your vehicle. It will take you down a very tight dead end. So I've drove probably 20, 25 minutes to West Bay. Now this place is well known because of the ITV drama Broadchurch, which has got, I think it's David Tennant in it. We're gonna have a brief walk around the little town and harbour, and then we're gonna make our way down to the beach, which is the iconic place from Broadchurch with the massive cliff in the background. So I'm just making my way from West Bay now and I'm heading to Portland. I just actually pulled up because the road um, from West Bay along to Portland, the view that you get of the sea and the beach to the right hand side is bloody tremendous and it stretches for miles. So this is the start of Chesil Beach here and this runs pretty much all the way towards Portland. So if you're doing this route, there's a couple of lay bars along the way, definitely worth pulling over and uh, having a wee look. The view's that good, I've even stopped at the ice cream man over there and got myself a bit of a magnum. So I've actually quite enjoyed my drive through Portland. Uh, I didn't realise it was so big. I didn't really know much about the place to be honest. Um, but we've come down to Portland Bill, which is pretty much the, uh, the bottom tip of the island. And there's two lighthouses here actually. We'll have a little walk around here and check it out. It looks really nice. So the one thing that I'm actually starting to enjoy now is driving again. The roads in Dorset are bigger, wider, uh, less of a ball lake than in Devon and Cornwall for sure. I made my way to Dorset's most iconic landmark, Durdle Door, a dramatic limestone arch set on the UNESCO World Heritage Jurassic Coast site. So as you make your way downhill, the first place you come to is Manowar uh, Bay, I think it's called. That I, I can't possibly describe just how unreal this place looks. The videos will kind of show, the photos will kind of show. But to come here and experience this on such a nice day, yeah, it's just impossible for me to put into words. So happy to be stood on the edge of a cliff. It sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? I'm not gonna throw myself off. But just look at that. What an absolute privilege.
I've seen a lot of stuff on this trip. I've been through Somerset. I've been through Devon, North and South. I've been through Cornwall. And all of them magical, magical places. And still this place has to be up there with the top two, three places that I've been on this trip. It's so hard to put an order on them and I shouldn't try and do that, but my gut reaction of this place is just unbelievable. If you're coming to the Southwest, particularly if you're coming to Dorset as part of your trip, there's no question that you have to come and visit Turtle Door. Manawal Beach, Bay, whatever it's called. Lulworth Cove, you have to come to this UNESCO World Heritage Place, you just have to do it. It's as simple as that. just before I show you even more of these amazing Jurassic Coast must-see locations, trust me, you need to stick around to the end. Here's a quick look at my new guidebook. So, you're going on a road trip to Cornwall, Devon, Somerset or Dorset? Then you definitely need Road Trip Southwest, the ultimate guidebook by Amazon best-selling travel writer Robbie Romes. Featuring incredible locations, practical tips, and stress-saving hacks to ensure your road trip to the southwest of England is simply unforgettable. Written in a no-fuss style, this book has everything you need from itineraries to hotels and campsites to beaches. Each must-see location comes with a postcode and what three words reference to make your road trip easy and stress-free. Order Road Trip Southwest right now for only $16.99, including free UK delivery. Good morning, so it's the last day of this mad Southwest trip. I've just been for a shower at the shower block and realised I've left my bloody shower gel in the last shower at the last campsite. Something that I've done multiple times and I'm an absolute idiot for it. I've been hunting around in the back of the van to see if Jazz has left anything. And the best I could come up with is the dog's Bugalug shampoo. So that's what I've had to wash my hair in. And I absolutely stink of the dog shampoo now. And if they understood, they'd be absolutely howling at me because they hate getting bathed and they hate that stuff. So it's like one up for the dogs today. Our first brief stop on this last day of the road trip is Swanage. Now Swanage is famous for its um, beautiful beach, which I'm sat right next to, and the pier at the north of Swanage. If you're a fan of in-betweeners, you'll know that they go to Swanage on a day out. Um, but Swanage isn't actually used uh, for the filming on the in-betweeners, which is a bit weird. Um, so they didn't actually come here, but the, the school trip was meant to have gone there. I'm just sat next to the beach now, uh, eating my Greg's breakfast. A uh, very healthy start to the day. The sun's out, and i got a feeling today's going to be a good day. I made the 10-minute drive to the iconic Corfe Castle, which was built by William the Conqueror in 1066. Exploring the ruins of the castle is a great way to spend a couple of hours and it's a National Trust location so free to enter if you have a membership. So I've made the seven mile drive from Corfe Castle and I'm parked at the South Beach Car Park which is a National Trust place here on Studland and I'm going to walk down to the Old Harry Rocks which I believe is about a mile there but anyway Old Harry Rocks are uh, these set of rocks cut out of the white chalk cliffs here in Dorset and other photographers dream really and should be a nice walk along the coastal route um, so that's what I'm going to go and do So another added bonus of coming to the old Harry Rocks. If it's a clear day, you get this great view right over the bay and you can see over to Paul, Bournemouth, and you can even see as far as the Isle of Wight, which is looking beautiful in the sunshine with the huge white cliffs. Probably very similar to what old Harry looks like down here. All in all, great little walk up to the cliffs, rewarded with a beautiful coastline. And then a nice little walk back to the car. And there's a pub on the way back to the car park.
So me and the dogs have come for a little walk down uh, Middle Beach here on Studland. Yeah, we've just come for a little stroll down here and it is just beautiful. I knew that Dorset had a lot to offer, but I had no idea there were so many places relatively close to each other. And it just makes it great for doing a road trip, it really does. So I've just paid for my ticket to get onto the ferry uh, over to Sandbanks, which actually cost me £5.20. I thought it was going to be £10 something, but I don't know why he's charged me less. Getting in line, there isn't far to go. I didn't realise I thought the ferry would be a little bit further than it is. Can't even be 100 metres. Um, it's interesting though, because there's a double-decker bus getting off. I think it's the number 50 bus um, that, that gets across the ferry. So I don't know if you're in the area and want to do a bit of sightseeing on the bus. The number 50 will take you from Studland over to Sandbanks and back at some point. Must be one of the shortest ferry crossings anywhere in the whole world. It took maybe three, four minutes if that. We're just about to land and yeah, gates are open and away we go. My last stop of the entire trip was Sandbanks Beach, easily one of the UK's best beaches. I was so taken back by the beauty of the place and the trip as a whole that I actually forgot to record much footage. Anyway. Here's a quick reflection on the trip. Yeah, it's kind of hard to put into words how great this trip has really been for me. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And most of us are kind of familiar with Cornwall, Devon, Somerset. Uh, perhaps we've been here on holiday a couple of times. But once you do a road trip here, you just get a completely different outlook on the Southwest. This corner of England is just mind-blowingly incredible in so many ways. The picturesque villages, the wild and rugged coastline with the beautiful turquoise waters, the white sands, the countryside, the pubs, the people, the cider, the pasties. I think you guys are probably as guilty as I've been of taking the UK for granted, you know. All too easy to just look for holidays abroad. But yeah, the one thing after this trip, I'll never ever take the UK for granted in terms of a holiday destination, a road trip destination. It's just got everything. And when the weather's nice, I know that plays a part, but when the weather's nice, I don't think you can beat it. If you've watched any of the episodes in this series, I really hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you've taken some value from the videos and perhaps they've even inspired your own Southwest trip. If you have any questions about the road trip or any of the locations, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where you can see photos and extra footage from all of my adventures. And just one last thing before I go, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. I've got a sneaky feeling my future videos might just be worth watching. To everybody that already subscribes, can I ask you to hit the like button to help this video series find more road trip adventurers just like yourself. And that's it, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.